Hello everyone. I hope you all are safe and healthy. Today in Standard Wealth Commerce Economics, we are going to discuss chapter number one, graphs in economics. This is the first part. Marks allocated as per Gujarat Board for this particular chapter, that is eight marks. So basically it is divided into three parts. One, section B, one question is going to be asked. Section C, two questions and section D, one question that is for three marks. In total, eight marks you are going to get if you do it correctly. And in section E, one question related with the graph is going to be asked that is also for five marks. So ultimately from this particular chapter, you can score 13 marks. Now let's start with the introduction, what is called as graphs in economics. You know that economics is a very vast subject, basically divided into two parts, micro and macro that everything you have seen in Saturday 11. But when it comes to sharing that particular information or data to anyone, it becomes difficult to understand it basically. So what we can do, we can draw the attention by the way of pictures, by the way of pictures and the pictures are diagrams and the graph. So let's start with the diagram, what is called as a diagram. So diagram is a representation of observable data that means data which is given by the observer by the way of picture that is called as diagram. Same way in which when we are creating the diagram we have to uh, understand in mind we need to know the scales and the measurement very well. But the statistical information is not required. If you don't have the knowledge of statistics then it is okay you can draw the diagram. Plus, it can be done, it can be presented when there is discrete, discrete that means discontinuous frequency distribution is there. That we will see in next two slides. Then a diagram is drawn and it is self-explanatory in nature. Whether someone is going to make you understand or not, it is self-explanatory in nature. That's why it is more reliable and more easiest form. So we can use the diagram to make people understand related with the information. So who are using these diagrams when uh, the spreading of information is there? So advertisement agency to draw the attention of the informers. Same way the government agencies to provide the attention. Same way the social organization to spread the awareness. Uh, you have seen many poster related with the coronavirus and everything. So the social organization is going to work for that for spreading awareness. If someone is don't have the knowledge related with the statistics, even though he can take the information and uh, with the help of diagram, he is able to understand what they really want to see. Now, what is graph? For a graph, you need the statistical information. Okay, here you can see that, but a graph is a statistical information which is self which is not self-explanatory, which is not self-explanatory, where a diagram was a self-explanatory. Just see the cursor, the diagram is a self-explanatory nature, but when it comes to graph, it is not self-explanatory. Same way, the statistics is not required. When it comes to the graph, the statistical information is required. Okay, so a graph basically works with the data which are continuous frequency distribution. That means the data which is written in a continuous manner that can be helpful when we are preparing the graph. So when the statistical information becomes complex, we can use the graphs and with the appropriate measurement, it can be presented in a good manner. Basically, this is used by the researchers and the educationalists. Now, this is the difference between the discrete that means discontinue and continuous frequency distribution. The first table, table 1.1, which you are seeing that is a discontinuous frequency di distribution. When there, is, there was a price 1 rupee, the demand was 100. When there was price 2 rupees, the demand has reduced to 80 rupees. When the price is 10 rupees, the demand which is reduced to 10 rupees. There is no continuous frequency 1, 2, 5, 7, the total is different, everything is different. So it is discontinuous or discrete. So for this, the best method that is diagram method. When it comes to the graph here, the continuous frequency distribution are there. 
let's take an class of income if your income is between the 10000 to 20000 you are here 20 to 30 you are here and 30 to 40 you are here so that is for the continuous frequency distribution same way when the marks are allocated if you have scored between 10 to 19 marks you are here 20 to 29 marks you are here and 30 to 39 marks that is 10 people are there so you are here so when there is continuous frequency distribution you are going to use the graphs that means you should have the knowledge of statistics that is uh, mandatory in nature okay now what is the importance of diagrams and graphs in economics let's start with the first one this question is asked in two marks in many questions so please draw attention over here the study related with the subject economics become easy by the way of diagrams and less confusing by the way of graphs so graphs will help you to make everything understand in very easy manner same way when you are comparing the trends trend test means the span of 10 years 15 years 20 years or 50 years so this will be helpful and in a single diagram or a single graph everything can be measured third the changes which are made in various sectors in the economy we can understand with the help of that let's take an example the sale which was happened in the year 2019 in the month of march in cars and sale which was happened in the year 2020 in the month of march that is different so we can uh, see through the various sectors same way what growth which was made in public sector companies and what, what growth which was made in the private sector companies whether the petrochemical companies are uh, getting more profits or uh, aviation industries are getting more profit so everything can be measured with the help of these two diagrams and the graph next a comparison can be easily drawn for the distribution of some economic parameter between the groups regions sectors let's take groups that means male or female okay then the group of people like the age between the teenagers younger people then the older okay so we can distribute with these parameters as well same way region let's take a uh, anand district amdavad district everything can be measured on the basis of regions same way on the basis of sectors industrial sector in which banking sector fmcg fast moving consumable goods sector so this can be measured with the help of different sectors so diagram and graphs are many more important in this the fifth one that is the time and the efforts of the presenter in explaining everything to the reader that means who is the uh, communicator or the person who is getting the information so it is becomes very easiest way to make him understand and it can save many of the time so these are the importance of diagram and the graphs in economics this question is asked for two months okay i request everyone to please note it down next the aspects to be considered while drawing the diagram or a graph when you are preparing the diagram or graph there are six major points which you have to understand first that is choice of type of diagram and graph which kind of diagram or which kind of uh, information or graph you are using that is also important let's take an example if you are using bar diagram if you are uh, using any kind of different graph if you are using pie chart so which information on the basis of that information you are going to use the diagram or the chart or the graph then the clarity when you are presenting anything in the uh, way of by the way of picture it should be neat and clean it must look neat and clean same way you can use different shades different colors to denote everything which is there in the picture so clarity is more important third scales and measurement when you are making any kind of picture look appropriate in size scales in it must in the accordance with the data so scales and uh, measurements are more important so if we are using proper scales and measurement the gra gra uh, graph which you are preparing looks very decent then the fourth one that is representation of the axis that means on which axis what information is there let's take an example if you are writing x axis and y axis 
on x axis you have to show the dependent variables on the y axis you have to show the independent variables so that information should be properly written when it comes to the representation of axis then the data table and the source of data it is very much important when we are uh, working with the economic subject we have to show the source from which you have to gather the information if you write it in a proper manner it is more reliable for the audience and it is more authenticate than the rest of the researchers so it is more important to show the data table as well as the source data from where you have collected the information and last one that is sixth one method of calculating the data when you are using the statistical formulas you have to use that you don't need to make your own formulas if someone has prepared the formula just you can use this and that will be more informative that can be more reliable so this is the end of this session i hope you have understood everything that's all for today thank you jai hind